Let's bring in Mick Aussie uh, right now. Uh, Mick, good to see you. Happy New Year, Mick. Yeah, well, it was Happy New Year in a day or two, but I just got a bit upset you dissing the Broncos players. <sighs> and I'll stick up for Sean Payton. <clears throat> Russell Wilson's been average bad, so you know what? How What a gig, get paid $39 million to maybe sit out for a year. That's not a bad gig, if that happens. Now, Russell Wilson... Three quarterbacks were great. Brett Favre, Aaron Rodgers, Russell Wilson. They've all turned into flogs, mate. Total idiots. I thought a couple of weeks ago you were back on his bandwagon. When you guys won five games in a row, <laughs> did he suck then? He was average to good. Good to average. So, there you so go. Sean Payton, so what, you think they're, they're winning because of Sean Payton and despite everybody else? I think Sean Payton is an excellent coach. I think they needed someone like him to go in and sort out Russell Wilson. We've said it before. He had his own office last year. What kind of rubbish is that? And what we're terrible. We're without Cortland Sutton. We had no deep threat last week against the Patriots. That ruined my Christmas Eve. Jerry Judy's overrated. Without Cortland Sutton, we were a mess. Couldn't win. No chance with a deep threat. So, yeah, we're down so, on wide receiver. You shouldn't have traded so much for Russell Wilson and or you're ripping all these other players that has nothing to do with Russell Wilson. Is it Russell Wilson's fault that Jerry Judy doesn't seem to care? Right? Not really. Probably. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Hey, I used to be like you. I used to be a massive fan of Russell Wilson and Cam would be too because of the Seahawks. But it all went to his head, mate. Like money and fame and he changed. I don't like arrogance. You know that. You should always stay cool, no Touchdown, matter how Missouri. famous you are. Look at Tom Brady. Yeah, Mick, never change. Mick, I predicted this before the year started, and I said, I said, Sean Payton's going to go in there. He's going to want to make Russell Wilson look bad so he can go to management after and tell them, we have no choice but to, you know, you have no choice but to eat $250 million, which they're going to have to do. And they don't really have a choice because they're giving Sean Payton $20 million a year, right? So they're kind of damned if they do, they're damned if they don't. Yeah. And Sean Payton knows it's Walmart money, right? So he knows the yeah. pockets are deep and the pockets are, you know, they can afford it. It's going to hit them as far as the salary cap is concerned. But the thing is then, Mick, now Sean Payton will have a built-in excuse for the future. Oh, I have a young quarterback yeah. now. Right, so it buys them another couple a year, a year or two, where yeah. people start to wonder, how come we never win now? That despite he makes twenty million dollars a year, two things can be right at the same time. I'm not telling you the Russell Wilson's an elite quarterback anymore, but what? what they did to him, you know, to tell him like you you have to change your contract mid season, that's some bush league type of stuff that won't go over well with other players. Oh, it could go down as one of the worst contract trades ever. And this annoys me as well. When these coaches come in and say, oh, he's not my guy. I want my guy. What a load of rubbish. Just try and win. Broncos are set back again another few years. It's an absolute disgrace. I think we're the second longest team without a playoff performance since, uh, well, that Super Bowl we won, right? All right. So Crazy. what's your pick for the Charger game? Because I, oh, bet, well, uh, I, did... I bet you're taking the Chargers. <laughs> no, no, no. I think, I think Stidham might actually play well. Because they were talking about this on one of the shows, that when Russell Wilson got sacked, none of the linemen went over to console him, like, as if they don't like him. I think there's some truth in that. I think they might fire up with a new quarterback. I did have them in my best bets, but I just scrubbed them out. But I'll take Broncos to win. And we'll say Hopefully. this, though, Mick. You know what? No, it's fair. Russell Wilson, in the last part of the season, when he started off cold, he cared. And he showed a lot of emotion on the sidelines and stuff. I know he's getting old. To Gabe's point, he's not elite. But I did respect the fact, Gabe, that he never quit in any type of game. He marched back. That game against New England got away from him. They scored touchdowns, got two-point conversions, and at the end, they just couldn't make a couple plays, hence the loss to New England. But I will say this. The guy played yeah, his ass off. He beat Josh off. Allen in the Buffalo guy. Bills. He did. He just, did. Just, He's just, not for, the just for the record, just for the record, he has 26, uh, 26 touchdown passes and eight interceptions. Yeah, it's coming. It's, he's been grinding this year. 
pretty good. Like twenty. So how many other quarterbacks? A lot of other quarterbacks don't have twenty six and eight. Um, but it's all good. It's all good. Um, like you said, he's going to get paid no matter what, right? He got a ton of money up front from the Denver Broncos, and he'll probably end up on the Raiders and beat you guys two times a year for the next couple of years. After. <laughs> <laughs> that's gonna happen. Wow, that's so it's funny. Yeah. <laughs> I can see that actually. I, yeah, and they'll that, pay him up? a fraction of the price. Yeah, yeah they'll be like, hey, listen, we're gonna pay him game? 25 mil, right? Yeah. We'll give him 25 mil a year and uh whatever. We have a new quarterback. Think about this too, the division, <laughs> AFC West. The only team that runs it is Kansas City. You got the Raiders with Versace did a great job, and then and then you bring in that idiot McDaniels. You're paying him and Gruden money. The Chargers didn't know what the hell to do with uh, Staley for years. They're a clown show in chief. Denver's got this issue, Gabe. Like the Chiefs must just be sitting there going, Wow, what a bunch of brain trust we work with in this division. It's unbelievable what has happened. Oh, yeah, they've, taken, they've taken advantage of it for sure. Yes, I they guess. sure yeah. have. <laughs> yes, Same with yes. the Cowboys and the Eagles. Like they think they're so yeah. great. Like it's like you play yeah. the Giants and the Commanders. You're in the same division. They're useless. Like they're just useless organizations. <laughs> like you know what I mean? It's, it's a tough. It is. It's a two team. Like it's a. You know, it's like two teams. It's like there's two teams in that division. The Cowboys and the Eagles. <laughs> Everybody else blows. So what are your best bets, Mick? What do you got for us? All right. Well, I'm gonna take the Raiders. Actually, on the money line, there's going to be an upset. And I think the Raiders are the ones that might pull off an upset. But last week was crazy. How can you pick it? Raiders to, to beat the Colts and on the plus, of course. And they made my Christmas Day beating the Chiefs. That was awesome. I like the Rams to cover over the Giants. I like the Bears to win minus 2.5 over the Falcons. They're going well, the Bears. And I like the Bucks to beat the Saints. They're going along nicely at home. And I've got to give credit to Baker Mayfield. I've never really disliked him. I've liked his moxie and his confidence. So well done to the Bucks. I like the Ravens on the minus. Too many injuries with the Dolphins. And that's totally a home field pick. And wait for it. I like the Patriots to cover against your Bills. Bills will win. But 14? Who have the Bills got? Stefan Diggs is not doing too well. Yeah, Captain James Cook, the running back, he's doing well. But I don't know about your bills, mate. They're a bit up and down as well, but they should win. <laughs> Mixed by humbug. Dude, it's a revenge game, man. The Bills might beat the Patriots by 30. They might put them in a pretzel if they can. I'll tell you what. Normally, we'll normally we'll I would agree and say, you know what? It's a lot of points, and they only need to win the game and stuff. It's personal. The thing is... It's the Bills' last home game of the year. They need the win, and it's their last home game of the year. The last game is in uh, Miami. So I think the Bills, there's a chance that it could, they could just really dial it up a notch, right? You know, they're already peaking right now, and they just sort of say, all right, let's take it to the next gear now. Punch these. Remember what they did? They, they beat the Patriots like 56 nothing or something in a playoff game a few years ago, whatever the hell the score was. They murdered them once, whatever it was. I forget the exact score. And um, I wouldn't be shocked if the same thing happened. But laying 14 at this time of the year, I tell you, Mick, if you just blindly took all these underdogs late in the season, like this is one underdogs cover because the, the numbers are too high and people bet what they look at the records and they don't really understand current form of teams. Like you said, the Bears are a good team right now, right? Like the Bears are a dangerous team to play against. Yeah, people, you know, oh, the Bears suck, et cetera. So what else do you got for us, Mick? What's your, like, your best of your best? Well, I just just gave you my best of my best, and I like the Raiders. <laughs> That's it? I gave you six. You just gave me my best. I gave you six, all right, an extra one. I had, I had the Broncos in. I had the 49ers in, but I took those out. And I hope the Bengals cover, and I absolutely hope they beat the Chiefs. And here's this. I got in an argument with Chat GTP tonight. I said to him, is Taylor Swift a curse on the Chiefs? And Chat GTP kept coming back, no, no, she's not a curse. I said, well, how come the dro receivers drop all the passes? They're thinking of Taylor Swift. No, 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 it's not Taylor Swift's Twist, fault. So then I got so upset with G Chat GTP. I said to her, I says, do you think the Chiefs players have wet dreams over Taylor Swift? So, Mick. Come back and said, oh, I can't answer they that. They were dropping passes before she was on the scene. They've been doing so it Mick, all year. This is, 
This is what it's come to now. You're now RB arguing with robots and chat, yeah. chat GPTs yeah. and AI about yeah. about Taylor Swift. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I reckon I'm right. I reckon oh, listen, right. you gotta I be reckon, totally I'm focused right. to win a Super Bowl. You guys know that. You gotta be focused on football and football only. And these players aren't they're looking at her in the crowd, they're listening to her music, thinking they all might she might like them. She's upset the team, mate. Absolutely. Oh. And wasn't that funny your mate Feinberg put a picture up of Taylor Swift? Cuddling uh, Mahomes' missus' shoulder because she was crying. That was so funny. I hope the Raiders win both games, Chiefs lose both games, and Raiders can still make top of that division. That would be hilarious. Mahomes, uh, Mahomes' wife is more annoying than Taylor Swift is even. <laughs> At least Taylor Swift has talent, right? Yeah. You know, Taylor Swift's like accomplished oh, yeah. things. Swift's an amazing superstar. Mahomes' wife is just, as you said, annoying, but, Francis. She's always around. Yeah, it's like, you know, I'd be a kind of like, I'm just being real. Like, if I was Taylor Swift, I'd kind of be like, listen, because I'm dating Travis Kelsey doesn't mean I get you, I'm hanging out with all of you in a suite. Yeah. Like, yeah, you want to yeah. take a picture? Like, seriously, like, Brittany Mahomes, like, her, her bestie now, like, always by her side. It's like, <laughs> like, you know what I mean? It's like, girl, you're married to the quarterback. Good for you. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I'd be, you know what I mean? Like, everybody's up there in that suite, and it's like, it's a big, uh, it's a big thing. But their team just sucks, Mick. Right? They it's the end of the line for them. Right? They mm -hmm. they don't have any wide receivers. Not Taylor Swift's fault. Nope. Well she's more successful I'm gonna stick than they to are. what I say. No, I think you've got to be so focused on the team. You've got to bond as a whole team. She's getting too much attention. So is he. It's upset him, mate. And I love it. I do I agree. It. I do agree. And I said at the time that he shouldn't have been going to like Brazil and Argentina and stuff like on a three day layoff. It's like, yeah. it's like, yeah, you could do this, but it's probably no. not the best for a 36 year old no. body to be flying to like South America yeah. and going to a bunch of rock concerts. Great. Call. Right. And you know, like you could just sort of, you know, we're not telling you not to hang out with her, but like I, when I saw that, but the thing is, Players don't care, bro. They all do their own thing on their on their off days. The Chiefs, you know, the lack of talent just catching up to them. Nobody likes them anyways. <laughs> this is Sports Rage. I am Ranci. There's eight minutes and uh, counting, 8.13 and counting uh, left right now in the Cotton Bowl. <clears throat> we were waiting for just one Missouri's touchdown, and it would be like, yeah, we're going to cover the number because Ohio State are offensively challenged uh, tonight. Missouri gets the touchdown. Schrader gets the touchdown. So we cashed the Schrader prop, which is cool. Uh, we got in on the end game over 15 and a half. Ohio State were moving the ball on their last drive, but they ended up going backwards. I thought they were going to line up for a field goal, try to make it 7-6. It's 7-3 right now, but now Missouri have momentum. Ohio State are getting frustrated on defense. They just took a personal foul. They're lucky they didn't get called again. They're like, they're cheap. Like, this has been a very chippy, mouthy, dirty hit game. And I think Ohio State are realizing they're about to lose. So now they're like, you know what? I'm going to get a couple of shots in on the way out here. Um, we got over 15 and a half. We're at 10 right now. Man, it'd be nice to get another touchdown. And Missouri have a first down right now on the 21-yard line. So a touchdown will get us there. Either way, whatever. It is what it is. So, uh, Mick. What are the plans for uh, for New Year's Eve before we get you out of here? Well, I'll watch the football and then go to a local bar. And then there's another bar with a band on, so we'll work it out. But got to be careful. You don't want to get stuck out late at night and can't get a taxi or Uber. But it's warm here, so not too bad, Mike. You walk home if we have to. But, yeah, New Year's is as good as when you're younger, I suppose, and single and chasing the ladies, right? Get some New Year's kisses and all that, right? <laughs> yeah. New Year's is kind of for amateurs. It's amateurs. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's, yeah, it is, kid. But yeah, it's a party, I guess. <laughs> but it is. It, there's nothing worse. It is true than getting gouged for like three hundred eighteen dollars for an Uber. Yeah, because it's, it's New Year's Eve. But like you said, Mick, it's not as cold any anymore anywhere. <laughs> so like the old days to be like, you just picture like, man, you're freezing to death. You got to pay whatever it is. It's like, yeah, whatever it costs. We don't have a choice. Now, like you said, it's okay, whatever, dude. It's nice. You can walk. So, uh, yeah. God bless global warming. Say yes. what you will. We're dying, <laughs> but it's, it's a warm death. <laughs>
All right, sounds like we got a pretty uh, we got a pretty boring crowd, man. Our Mick Aussie, uh, he sort of said, yeah. "I'm going to a bar." Well, Mick's going to see a bar in a bed. <laughs> Joe Madden said that she's got. Um, and yeah. There's a difference. Joe's like um, she's trendier than you are, Mick. Like she said, "Well, I've been invited to three different parties, so I got to decide which one yeah. to go to." So like yeah. she's she's got a lot of options. You're just you're just going to a bar in Edmonton to watch a band. Uh, what are you doing, Cam? <laughs> New Year's Eve. I'm doing probably the most boring, just going over to my buddy's house and getting torqued with my girlfriend, kind of like what we do on uh, other nights that I'm free. It's uh, not another <laughs> night to me. Same, same old, same old, Marenzi. I'm not going to a bar, not going to see a band, not really doing anything. But uh, the drinks will be flowing and the sports will be bet. And uh, yeah, it's uh, lots of alcohol consumption. Yeah, I understand. You listen, you got to live it up a bit. It's good to get out. I understand yeah, the house out. parties. I understand the house party stuff. You know, I don't, I'm not talking about like going to a Vegas nightclub on New Year's Eve where it's like $2,000 to get in and the bottle service yeah. type of stuff. Um, but you know what? Vegas is cool. On, that's what's one really cool thing about Vegas on New Year's Eve is um, you can just sort of walk the strip and you can go outside and there's fireworks everywhere and there's parties on the street uh, everywhere. I'm going to take it easy on New Year's Eve for the most part. I say that, but I'm going to. Because the football game is pretty early, and yeah. um, traffic is a killer. So it's going to take, like, probably an hour, if I'm lucky, type of deal to even get to the actual stadium. I got to leave early. I don't want to be viciously, you know, hung over and have the shakes and, oh, all right, I got to leave at 9 in the morning to go to the football game. I hate that. So I'm going to party on Saturday night, tomorrow night, yeah. recover on Sunday. I'm going to go out a little bit on New Year's Eve, go for a little walk uh, in Hollywood. Uh, but then uh, Monday, we we get after it at the Rose Bowl uh, once again. Except now, like, that the game is getting closer. Like, the pressure is real. Like, it's like, it's not like a fun thing. That's why I don't like going to a lot of these championship games. Like, I go to a lot of sporting event mix, Mick, like, but it sucks. Like, I went to see the Canadians in the Stanley Cup. They were losing, like, 3 nothing, like, six minutes into the game. And I'm like, man, I flew all this way to like watch this, and like they ended up losing like five one or something. Yeah. <laughs> like it's one thing, like when you go to a regular season game, it's like, yeah, yeah whatever, I mean, who cares? They lost, right? But like when you go to these playoff games, like the stakes are high. It's like it actually matters and stuff. But I'm gonna try to enjoy myself no matter what happens. All right, first one goal get, for Missouri right now. You, you do have commitment. Like, you do a lot more traveling. Like, remember when you came to Toronto, we did that show from Wild Wing to watch the Raptors, and they lost that night. Then they sealed the deal when they went back to California and beat Golden State. You flew across, like, for that for that one, too. So, your commitment's strong. Let's hope Michigan gets it done this time. Perhaps. Well, if my, teams, if my teams make it. Well, I go to a lot of sporting events. A lot of people don't go to games ever, right? So, or, they, you know, like, they just, they don't get out, right? But, like. I don't like, like, I would go to many more games if I wasn't doing the show every night. Exactly. There it is. Boom. And, nice call. And, boom. It's Luther Burden to third. We actually had Schrader to score a touchdown and Luther Burden to score a touchdown. There's the in-game over we gave you. I'm going to tell you, we've been like an ATM machine with these bowl <laughs> games and this in-game stuff. And, um, boom, there it is. Touchdown. Missouri's going to win. We lose the 51, but we hit the touchdown props. We hit Missouri plus the points, and we hit the in-game over uh, 15 and a half. So, uh, and anyone that followed us on Twitter today, I don't know about you, Cam, if you got in on it, but, like, Memphis rolled. Like, we were on yeah. Memphis plus the points. I was on the over the game. I was on the in-game. I was on in-game Memphis. It was one of those beautiful games. We ended up going 7-0 and uh, with the in-game and everything when it was all said and done. This one's not good bad, day. actually. We'll go like Good four day. and one in this one. Started with the over in Kentucky. Kentucky covered. Lot nor I lost game the game, and you warned me about it too. It was going under the whole game. That Oregon State uh, Notre Dame game it was like literally the live total was thirty one, and then they just scored like tons of late points there to go over the number. Other than that, it's been a very very nice day. We got to get you into college football, Mick. <clears throat> you know, watch the games on uh, Monday: Texas, Washington, yep. Michigan, yep. Alabama. Yep, I watched the big games, and I actually saw Washington play years ago when I first got here. So, yeah, the big games are good. 
the Ohio State, they annoy me. None of those guys are playing. Backups are playing. Braves, mate. It's a disgrace. Honestly, hope the TV deals drop them because none of the kids are playing. Terrible. I don't know how you bet on it if you don't know who's playing. It's tricky. It's tricky. You have to sort of, you have to know the the backups. You have to know the situations. But basically, it doesn't matter. Like, a good example is today, Oregon State played against Notre Dame. And both teams were, like, had maybe 25% of their starters. Like, Oregon State are moving conferences. Their coach left. Both their quarterbacks left. They literally had, like, 20-plus guys that were not there. At Notre Dame, Notre Dame, all their star players were on the bench, but Notre Dame are good enough that they have a bunch of dudes that are going to the NFL, and they didn't play. Point being, the game was sold out, right? And the crowd was lit. They had a great time. Notre Dame won. They lifted a trophy. People don't care, right? Like, people always say, oh, I was disappointed this person I'll play. When it comes, it's like the UFC. There's a reason why they don't put the fighter names on the poster. It says UFC 292. It doesn't say blah, blah versus who, who. It says UFC 292. It's not like J.J. McCarthy versus Milrow. It's Michigan versus Alabama. People cheer for the brand, man. You could put scrub players in. Look at, like, the strike year and stuff. Like, Mick, it doesn't matter if the guy sucks or not. If he's wearing an orange jersey and he's wearing a Bronco jersey, you're going to cheer for him. It's just point blank. Yeah. You're not cheering it's, for it's the player. All... You're cheering for the helmet. Like, you're cheering for the uniform. Yeah, but it's it's all about money now, and it drives me nuts. Sure, if you make the NFL and make millions, good on you. I'm glad I played when I did, because you play all year. And if you happen to win that AFL or Aussie footy premiership, it's the highlight of your life. And you remember those guys. So you're you glad you're with, old and you ever. played when there was no money? Do it. <laughs> what? Where's our pension? <laughs> Funny, my grandfather played in the 40s in the NHL. And he always tells me, man, I wish I played in today's era. I would have made a hell of exactly. a lot of money. <laughs> like, yeah, so right. he tell me the <laughs> opposite. He didn't say, food. oh, you know, these, these, I wish it was like the old days. He said, I wish exactly. we made that much money. <laughs> it's true, man. Yeah, how many people guys? make money? Crazy. What percentage make the NFL? 1%? So all these kids are not playing and they won't ever get the chance to be in a team with their best players and remember it for all their lives. So... Money, oh, money, money. It's true everything. Uh, it's true. You got to finish the job. I do agree. Yeah. No, I agree, Mick. And, and I say the same thing. Like, me. you have a special memory in your life. Like you said, like, not everyone's going to the NFL. Yeah. It'd be a great memory. I remember playing in stupid hockey tournaments and stuff. Obviously, playing in a cotton bowl, right? Like the kid on USC that threw six touchdown passes. Yeah. Moss. Whatever. This kid's got that story for the rest of his life. Right, yeah, he can right. be on talk shows, going to be a college football analyst, whatever, man. He'll be the dude. He'll be like, yeah, man, that's the dude. He threw six touchdown passes in that bowl game yep. that time. Right? Now, that's, Bungie, that's, that's, once you're in, you're in. Thanks, man. Yeah.